We are traveling through space at the speed of light. The route from Earth to the sun at that speed will take only eight minutes, but it would take us about 35 years to reach our destination, which is, by the way, still very fast. By comparison, a conventional rocket would take about 600,000 years to make the journey. And here we are. It's a star system suspiciously very similar to our own. And our scientists suspect that life could exist here, just like on Earth. A red dwarf, 30% the size and weight of the sun, lies at the heart of this star system. But these are the planets orbiting the star that interest us most. The first of these is L9859b. Its size is somewhere between Earth and Mars, but it's very light. It's only half the mass of Venus. But life is impossible on this rocky planet. It's too close to the star, and it's so hot, you'd burn a cake if you tried baking it on its surface. It's about 100 degrees higher than the maximum of your oven. The planet makes a complete circle around its host star in just two days, compared to 365 for Earth. And it gets 22 times more energy than we get from the sun. So it's not only hot there, but there's a lot of dangerous radiation. The next planet is 2.8 million miles from its host star. That's 13 times closer than the distance from Mercury to the sun. And it makes a complete revolution around the star in 3.7 days. But what's interesting is that the planet is 30% bigger than the Earth and twice as heavy. So it belongs to the class of super-Earth planets. Such planets can be rich in water ice, methane, and hydrogen. These are some of the elements that are necessary for life's existence. Many scientists believe that it's on such planets that extraterrestrial civilizations can live. But because of the great weight of the planet, it has a strong gravitational force. So these civilizations may not be able to fly into space because it's harder for them to get out of the gravitational trap of a super-Earth planet. However, life isn't possible here because the planet is still too close to the host star. And just like in our solar system, the two nearest planets are too hot. But the third planet looks more promising. L9859d. It's almost twice as heavy as the Earth and 50% bigger. Scientists have calculated that about a third of its mass could be water. For comparison, the mass of all water on Earth is only 0.02%. The presence of water is the main condition for the emergence of life. But we can only guess where the water might be. It could be on the surface, but high temperatures can turn large oceans into giant clouds of steam. But water can also be contained in the groundwater below the surface. Well, we can't know that for sure yet. Let's move on to the next planet in the star system. This newly discovered planet is of the Super Venus class, L9859e. It's a rocky planet three times the size of Earth. The Super Venus class means that the planet is heavy enough to have an atmosphere, but the conditions there are more like a greenhouse. Different gases fill the atmosphere there. Star rays pass through them to the planet's surface, reflect off it, and rise upward but the dense gases don't let them leave the atmosphere, so the planet gets hotter and hotter. This is the greenhouse effect that we try so hard to avoid on Earth. On top of that, the stellar wind carries water vapor and other elements from the upper layers of the atmosphere into outer space. Life cannot exist on such a planet, nor could it ever originate, just like on Earth's twin sister, Venus. So far, all the planets we've looked at are outside the habitable zone of the host star. That's the sweet spot at a perfect distance from the star. Not too close so that the planet isn't too hot and the water there doesn't evaporate instantly. And not too far away so that the planet doesn't look like a cold desert. And planets B, C, D, and E are too close to the host star. But there's another hypothetical planet F in this star system located right in this sweet spot. This super-Earth candidate is 2.5 times heavier than our home planet. So we have hopes that it's a rocky world, just like the other planets in this star system. The weight of planet F is enough to have a dense atmosphere, and the temperature on its surface should be suitable for water to exist there in liquid form. The planet makes a complete circle around its host star in 23 days which literally means it's New Year every three weeks. It isn't very likely, though, that there's a civilization there that celebrates it. Indeed, the very existence of this planet is very doubtful, 
because we still have no direct evidence. All the other planets have been discovered by the transit method. That's when we point our telescopes directly at a star and watch its brightness change. When there's a slight drop in the star's brightness, that's when a planet has passed between us and the star, like this dot. We have a short period of time while the planet is in the background of the star to determine its size and speed. Sometimes we can observe such transits of Mercury and Venus on the solar disk. And there are at least 29 potentially habitable planets out there in distant space that can observe Earth in the same way. About 1,715 stars within a few hundred light years are perfectly located for it. Each star has planets around it, but only 29 of them are in the habitable zone. So there really could be life and an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization out there. If so, they could point their telescopes toward the sun and see a small dot pass across the solar disk. And they could have been making these observations for at least the last 5,000 years. So they could see how our civilization was born and how we evolved. Moreover, these planets are close enough to pick up our radio signals and even television broadcasts. But it works both ways. Radio signals travel through space at the speed of light. We mastered this technology about 100 years ago. So if there really is a civilization out there somewhere, we would pick up their signals too. But so far, it hasn't happened. So we have no proof of the existence of life on these planets. The discovery of a star system like L9859 is very important to us because we're always looking for life outside of our solar system. And super Earth-class planets are even better suited for the origin of life than planet Earth itself. Such planets are sometimes called superhabitable. So some scientists think that Earth is a good place for life, but not the best. Superhabitable planets would have to be 30% larger than Earth and twice as heavy. This would create stronger gravity, which would make the atmosphere on the planet denser and with a higher concentration of oxygen. This in turn would raise the average temperature on the planet to a perfect 77 degrees Fahrenheit, so plants would thrive there. Also, stronger gravity makes the surface of the planet flatter, so there might be more oceans there than on Earth. This would make aquatic life much more diverse. The host star also plays a very important role. It should be smaller than the sun. The bigger the star, the more of its fuel it burns. This means that the lifespan of such stars is much shorter. For example, the lifespan of the sun is about 10 billion years, but a red dwarf can live up to 30 billion years. More time, more opportunity for the birth of life and evolution. So far, scientists have discovered 24 superabundant planets, but that still doesn't mean that there is life there for real. But some scientists believe that there are already at least 36 advanced civilizations in our galaxy, besides Earth. They've searched for similar worlds on the star map. First, we find stars that look like the sun among about 100 billion stars throughout the galaxy. Now we choose from them those that are rich in iron. Such stars burn at the perfect temperature and help the planets around them gain an iron core and become Earth-like. Now let's pick relatively young stars from this pile, because when they get older, they expand and either absorb the planets around them or burn them up. One last thing, let's find planets in this pile that are in the habitable zone of the star. And voila, 36 worlds may be inhabited by some unknown civilization. But we won't know for sure until we get in touch with them.